So I clicked on another thing on Acquire Knowledge Definite Article Popular Board Game. Crap. It's like an itchy scab you know you should leave alone. But then again... Firstly, let me say that for an organization, and I use that word loosely here, who advocate you don't take stuff, they certainly recommend that you do take a crap load of supplements. So this is just for detox, right? Right. So who needs to detox? Everyone, of course. And they accuse the medical professionals of making people into returning customers. Okay, some of these are found in three pennies a day vitamin pills, such as vitamin C, magnesium and selenium and vitamin B. And that's what they do. I said that in my last video. They say something reasonable in order for you to take the other bits as equally valid. I could debunk each of these in turn, but what's the point? None of these are dangerous, I assume. There is harm in some so-called cleansers, but again, I'm not going there. However, none of these are proven for anything that an actual medicine can't do better. How do I know? Because they would be the medicine. Nobody should listen to somebody talking about anything when they also say this about cancer. Cancer is a systemic health issue that results from overexposure of toxins from the environment around us, including water, industrial food, air, radiation, pharmaceutical medications, vaccines, smoking, and so forth. If one gets a cancer diagnosis, they need to detox the toxins that have accumulated in the body. You cannot poison your way back to health. If you have cancer, consider doing the things these people are doing immediately and say no to chemotherapy and radiation. Get off all medications and no vaccines. They neglect to say that some cancers are genetic and some are caused by viruses such as the human papilloma virus or HPV or HIV and Kaposi sarcoma or hepatitis B virus and liver cancer and that you can reduce your risk of developing these by vaccinating. Cervical cancer is a horrendous form of cancer with a high mortality. Telling people not to vaccinate against HPV is worse than stupid, particularly when parents, so-called adults, make this decision for their children. Strangely enough, cancer research hasn't identified a group of toxins which you can get rid of by doing these cleanses. Or what exactly? Ah, yes. Get off all medications. This is insane advice for anyone. Getting off any number of medications, again, which all have side effects, but where the ailment they treat is more dangerous than the side effect, can be incredibly risky. And apparently you can't poison yourself healthy. This will be unwelcome news to heart patients who are given warfarin, a rat poison, or insulin, which is lethal in minute doses. It just depends on how much, for whom and when. Poison is not an exact word. The dose makes it. This is just more pseudo-profound nonsense. Now there's a problem still with many cancer diagnoses and treatments. Some cancers will be misidentified and treated with chemotherapy when they don't need to be. But, and it is a big but, that's because we don't know everything yet about cancer. More research is needed. What Learn the Risk is saying is this. No research is needed. Just live healthily. Okay, you can look into cancer survival rates to debunk this. But again, this is more insidious. If you die well, then were you really off all medication? Did you really say no to harmful toxins? How would you know? They don't specify anything. And while more people are getting cancer, simply because they live longer, cancer survival rates are going up. I need to get a move on. I don't want to be sucked into this funnel of bullcrap again. But it is so hard. Remove all chemicals. Remove all chemicals? Everything is a chemical. They use the word chemical in a pejorative way to mean bad. Well, is baking soda bad? Many advocates of natural cleaning products recommended. How is it made? By the Solvay process, which is an industrial process that uses ammonia. And then they, with a straight virtual web face, recommend diffusing essential oils, which end up in your lungs. Essential oils, some of which are incredibly toxic, such as eucalyptus, camphor, and tea tree, and wintergreen, 
and lavender and thyme and clove. Remember, you can't poison your way to health. Natural remedies, indeed. Do they only work if they come from doTERRA? I wonder whether... No, it couldn't be. Can it? And yes, they are an MLM, a multi-level marketing company, whose representatives are making sort of claims that their parent company can't and won't support. But nobody can say that they try to profiteer from the current pandemic, can they? Making claims about health benefits and earnings. Oh, snap! And doTERRA was one of them. Get a high-quality water filter for every water source, showers and baths included, and only use filtered water for all drinking, cooking and showering. I hope you're using an organic water filter that doesn't use any chemicals. Now, I have to admit, we have a filter jug, because our tap water tastes awful sometimes, and the filter helps a bit. Still, probably more homeopathic or placebo effect than anything else. As for showering and bathing, you can't absorb stuff from tap water through the skin. That's what the skin is for. It's a barrier. Next. Stop eating all meat, fish, sugar, and stop drinking coffee and alcohol until cancer is gone. These things have very high levels of toxic chemicals and it takes more energy to digest and to filter these things. Energy that the body needs to be fighting cancer. Consider becoming vegetarian and alcohol-free for life to avoid recurrence of cancer. Again, some good advice with some nonsense. Red meat is linked to some cancers, particularly processed red meat. Refined sugar consumption is linked to diabetes. However, fructose is often used as a substitute in diabetic food formulations, and overall sugar is needed to survive. There's a bit of complexity here between what different sugars are and what they do, but it is quite typical that here they will just say sugar and not differentiate. Lazy and uninformed. Alcohol is linked to cancer, but coffee? There's throat cancer from chugging down boiling hot coffee, but there's no obvious evidence that there are carcinogens in coffee. The best I can come up with is that A, acrylamide has been a suspected carcinogen, among others, in what in the UK are called chips, and from the roasting of coffee beans, and B, learn the risk, don't sell coffee. So the words that have been used with no knowledge or no definition are cancer, toxic, chemicals, energy, Digest. Filter. Body, probably. Next. Ah, yes. Detoxing. A word that means not very much. But it will take a little dive into this bullcrap rabbit hole. I looked for detox and came across Bioray, a company doing detox. And in their myth-busting bit, they promise science facts. Well, not referenced in their answers, they aren't. But looking at the references, which ones stand out? And not just because I've highlighted one of them, just did that to save some time. So I copied and pasted it into Google, and... No, further down, there is Stephanie Ray on LinkedIn. And then there are two links, and they cast doubt on the efficacy of detox to make you healthier. Better to eat healthily, says Mayo. I agree. But we are just so susceptible to quick fixes. Who hasn't been tempted to lose belly fat just doing this one weird trick? Start doing hyperbaric oxygen treatments, infrared sauna, daily exercise, daily sunlight or sun lamp if needed in winter. Funny, is that organic sunlight? Daylight lamps have been recommended for SAD, seasonal affective disorder. Exercise is good, warmth is good, but hyperbaric oxygen treatment? How would you achieve this at home? Hyperventilate? And why is this supposed to be good? Never mind. Next. Join the group Natural Cures Cancer Research Facebook group. They have a ton of info. No thanks. Next. Definitely diet changes and lots of detoxing. This not sentence. Have you run out of things to suggest? You already suggested that. Next. Cut out sugar in all forms, even in carbs and starchy veggies and alcohol. Have you run out of things to suggest? You already suggested that. Next. Detox. Essiac tea. Lots of herbal teas. Do they sell teas? Next. Nourish. Eat your rainbows and nutrient-dense foods. What do you mean by nutrient-dense? Glucose and starch are nutrients and you told us to cut them out. Next.
cut out processed foods. What does processed mean here? Pre-cooked? Are you not supposed to cook stuff? Is this going in the raw diet territory? Some processed foods are not good for you. But then tofu is processed. So is chocolate and I draw the line at chocolate. Seriously. Next. Eat anti-cancer foods such as garlic, lemongrass, plants such as broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts and cabbage. So that's where we've gone wrong all this time. Simple. Just eat anti-cancer food. I do like all of them, but what is your reasoning here? No? Given up? Next. Apricot seeds and vitamin B17 and ozone. Have you ingested your own essential oils? This is not sentence. Ozone is not good for you unless it's hovering miles above you filtering UV rays. Hence the guidelines for workplaces about ozone emissions from copiers and laser printers. However, there is a connection between apricot seeds or their kernels and vitamin B17. Vitamin B17 or amygdalin is found in various fruit seeds and kernels, also in bitter almonds. A purified form called Laetrile, what, sorry about the pronunciation, was a fatty cancer treatment, enjoyed some popularity before it was proven ineffective as a cancer cure. But these things hang around, particularly with folks like these. But thanks to WebMD, we can have a little look at what might happen if you take it. Cyanide poisoning. Admittedly, you need to take a lot, about 50 grams, but you can also damage your liver or go into a coma. All for a cancer treatment that doesn't work. So, to summarize, flush this advice down the loo. Do yourself a favor and check their claims. See what reputable sources say. And before you say, ah, well, they're in on it, consider this. Learn the risk and folks at BioRay, among others, happily quote scientific articles and they distort or cherry pick, but they can't deny it. Why? Because they're not poisoning the well of their own information. They quote mine and they reframe, but they use information from places of science. You should too. Read the rest of the article, not just the quote. Treat yourself to three different sources for the same fact. This may seem cumbersome, but if you catch them in one lie or one inaccuracy, it should raise doubt about the others. Google terms such as detoxing and look for the signs. Why? Because I can guarantee that almost everything of interest which has a chance of working will have been tested. Unless it is unutterably stupid. Let's have a go. Can you use spider venom as a cancer cure? Hey, look at that. What about broccoli? That was listed. And there you go. From the NHS. Do they deny it? No, they explain it. And look, they are kind to the Daily Mail. Generally well presented. Aww. See, there's nothing to fear from the medical establishment. Unless you fear that a fantasy miracle cure is not available on Learn the Risks website. Because, well, now you know it's bunkum. I've just had a herbal tea and feel very calm. See ya.